Mr. Coates and this is Apes Lecture number 17 on the world's fisheries. You ever gone to a fish market and you see all these different species of fish? Uh, looks like some kind of porgy here, there's fillets, there might be crabs and shrimp, things like that. And kind of wonder where did all this come from? It just doesn't show up on your table by magic. So we have to look at uh, why these fisheries, where they come from, why, the, why they're important to humans, and why they're in danger, and what are their environmental impacts. So first of all, let's look at the importance of fisheries. It counts for a lot of our diet, 4% of the average human's diet, 18% uh, of the protein that we ingest. So it's a very important protein source for humans, even more so in Asian countries. Asians eat a lot more fish than we do here in America and uh, their protein diet is mostly fish. Here in America we still have a lot of beef and a lot of chicken but fish is actually on the rise in America as well. Uh, most of our fish also come from the ocean so we, we need to look at, at how that's happening. We look at the uh, trend in fisheries in the uh, world. You can see over uh, the last 60 years here the trend is definitely increasing and this goes all the way up to 2000 um, so we're lacking 14 years worth of data. You can see that the amount of fish that we catch is ever increasing. Now when we think about commercial fisheries and these are the people who get paid to fish they target both open water which are the pelagic species here they also target benthic or also known as ground fish things like crabs uh, halibut which is a large flat fish like kinda like a flounder Realize there are hundreds of thousands of species in the ocean. Unfortunately, only 500 of those take the brunt of our fishing uh, worldwide. And if we can find ways to use some of those others and kind of spread the impact of using these fish across a broader group, uh, some of these fisheries can uh, be sustainable. However, some fisheries can be unsustainable. Now, when we talk about commercial fish, they're found primarily in two different places. First, the continental shelf. This is where most of the nutrients run off the continent. You have high primary productivity. You have good food sources for these fisheries fish. So you have a lot of fish pretty close to the coast. There are some other areas where nutrients are high, and these are upwelling areas. And we talked a little, little bit about upwelling when we talked about El Nino. But in normal upwelling areas, you have nutrients that are brought to the surface. This creates phytoplankton blooms, which then create zooplankton blooms, and a lot of food for fish. So fisheries are very uh, active in areas of upwelling, and this is because of the primary productivity. When we talk about fisheries, we can't forget about the economy. Uh, fishing is a huge economic resource out there. Um, it employs 15 million people directly worldwide, 200 million additional jobs worldwide, rely on fishing and so these are the people who uh, make the nets, who repair the boats, who uh, transport the fish to market, who process the fish, all these people are involved in the uh, fishing uh, economy. Unfortunately the status of the world's fish is is not very good. We once thought that oceans were an endless supply of fish and that the oceans could supply us with f uh, food fish forever. Unfortunately um, that's not true and there are certain reasons because of that. First of all, the rise in demand. Uh, we saw that graph earlier that showed uh, the upward trend in fish being eaten worldwide. And uh, so that's one big problem. The other big problem is our increase in technology. In the past, small boats went out and caught the fish and they had to stay pretty close to land so they could bring their fish back and that way they could be processed. Well, with new technologies, we now have what we call factory ships. This is an example of a factory ship. Now, this ship is a trawler, and we'll get to what a trawl is here a little bit later. But uh, this ship in one net can catch over 100 tons of fish in one haul. And it no longer has to go back to the dock. It actually has a factory right on board. This factory will actually process that 100 tons of fish within 24 hours and have it frozen and boxed on the ship. Because this ship now can do all of that, they can stay out longer and they can catch more fish. And so this is one of the problems behind uh, declining fisheries. Another thing is the wastefulness of some of the fisheries. For example, the shark fishery. Uh, in Asian countries, shark fin soup is a delicacy. And so uh, a lot of Asian fishermen will search for sharks and they only want the fins. 
So they, when they catch a shark, they will actually just take the fins off and then throw the rest of the carcass overboard. And there's valuable meat in that carcass, but they don't want that. All they want is the fins because they can get so much more for the fins than they can the rest of the meat. It's not worth their time. So it's a terrible waste. A little bit later, we'll see something else that's wasteful is the bycatch. When uh, fishermen catch a targeted species, a lot of times they catch species they don't want, and this is called bycatch. And if that bycatch could be uh, used in some meaningful way, that'd be uh, better for the world. Uh, this little graphic here shows uh, some of the shark problem. Um, a lot of people fear sharks, and therefore every shark is a bad shark, but that's not the case. Remember, sharks are the top level predator in the world's oceans. They help keep other fish populations down. And if we kill all the sharks off, then we're going to have overpopulation of other fish species and the ecosystem will become unbalanced. So this is a worldwide tally here, the amount of people that die every year because of shark attacks or just shark bites. However, uh, this is the tally of how many sharks are killed per hour by humans. Uh, obviously, it's disproportionate. We have to talk about the amount of fish we can take. This is called maximum sustainable yield. We talked about this uh, when we were talking about uh, sustainability before. But it's the highest number of species that we can catch without ruining the stock for the future. And uh, unfortunately, overfishing has happened too often in the past. One good example of that is the Atlantic cod uh, collapse uh, off of the coast of Newfoundland. And uh, if you see that uh, if we look at this graph here that over the years the cod catch was increasing and then all of a sudden uh, we had a huge spike in the amount of fish caught here and this was probably due to the improved technology however the fish could not sustain that much catch and we had a huge crash then at, uh, ended in 1992 and basically they outlawed the catch of uh, Atlantic cod and uh, thousands of people lost their job because this fishery died. And this was a, an ocean fishery that supported people for long periods of time and was thought to be inexhaustible. And uh, so we way overfished this. We were way over our maximum sustainable yield for this fish. The problem is it's hard to tell what is maximum sustainable yield. You have other factors that uh, play a part such as uh, environmental changes that you can't predict, uh, pollution that's hard to predict, uh, and so it's really hard to know exactly what is that maximum sustainable yield for a fishery every single year. And so there's a lot of time spent debating uh, between scientists and uh, managers to find out what is the happy medium here uh, so we can uh, keep those stocks high for the next generation. And then the other part of this is economic pressure. You start limiting the amount of fish people can catch, you start affecting their uh, wallet, and you start affecting their livelihood and their families. And uh, this uh, becomes a huge economic problem all of a sudden as well. So there has to be a balance between the economic side of things as well as uh, maintaining that maximum sustainable yield so the fish will be there in the future. Whatever the maximum sustainable yield is, most of the world's fisheries are probably being overfished at this point. And until we have a good handle on maximum sustainable yield and we can deal with the economic issues, um, unfortunately, that'll probably continue. Let's look at some evidence of overfishing. Uh, this is some data here on North Atlantic swordfish. Um, and uh, basically, in the United States, swordfish declined by 70% in the years between 82 and 90. And it's still declining. Whenever you see swordfish on the menu, I would always decline it. Uh, I never eat swordfish. and uh, and this is one of the reasons why I don't eat swordfish is that it's being fished at an unsustainable level at this point and uh, it doesn't do any good for you to keep on buying it. Bluefin tuna, three years we saw an 80% decline worldwide for this fish. Bluefin tuna, which is this fish over here, uh, has become the world's most expensive fish and uh, some of them can go for well over a hundred dollars per kilogram and a kilogram is 2.5 pounds so $100 per kilogram, and that's an expensive fish, and people will fish and fish and fish for a large bluefin tuna so they can make this money. They can make a lot of money just by catching one fish. Some other issues with overfishing. It, overfishing can cause ecosystem imbalance. I talked about this with the sharks. If we ha harvest too many organisms in one place, the whole entire ecosystem becomes unbalanced. 
So too many planktivores being harvested results in plankton blooms. Uh, other things can starve because they eat some of the organisms that we fish for. We can cause ecosystem and biome balance by taking too many fish. One of the other issues is bycatch. I mentioned this earlier as a wasteful thing that happens. Um, bycatch is any unintentional organism that is captured uh, by commercial fishing. And because commercial fishing uses all kinds of different methods, different kinds of nets and lines and things like that, they can't target one specific species all of the time. So they invariably catch all kinds of organisms that no one's going to ever eat. And this results in about 29 million tons of killed biomass by commercial fishing. And none of this is really used. Uh, it's all thrown back into the ocean as waste. Um, and this includes birds and sea turtles, which are all endangered, as well as non-targeted fish. It could even include dolphins and whales. If you look at this picture down here, we even have sea stars, and nobody's going to eat the sea stars there. We have stingrays, and most people don't eat stingrays. Well, I hope that was helpful, uh, helping you understand fisheries and some of the problems associated. The next lecture, we'll look at fishing gear.